Welcome to our Christmas Eve service, which, like a lot of things these days, is coming to you in a virtual format. We have had other activities going on today, and there will be a Christmas Day virtual service at 10 o'clock tomorrow morning. So we invite you to participate in any of these. With voices rising, rising like incense. We prayed in hope. We reached to you in hope. We sang in hope. We shouted with hope. Tonight we see in the shadows and the shine, the holy mystery of a hope fulfilled and a hope to come. Tonight Tonight we we move move in hope. hope. We move as a people waking from a slumber, like a new parent hearing a cry in the night. For unto us a child is born. 
we move with confidence and praise because hope has arrived. You have increased our joy. We move with determination that liberation is not just our destiny but our reality. The rod of their oppressors you have broken. We move because the one born this night invites us to come and follow. We move because the Christ tells us, take up our cross. We move to bear one another's burden, like Simon of Cyrene, who held the cross for Jesus. We move in the march toward freedom. We move towards the promised land. We move forward in hope. We move in hope because hope moved into the world. This one shall be called Wonderful Counselor, the Strength of God, Eternal Protector, Champion of Peace. We move in hope, O God. We move move forward forward in in hope. hope. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you.
Almighty God, you made this holy night shine with the true brightness of the true light. Grant that here on earth we may walk in the light of Jesus' presence and in the last day wake to the brightness of his glory. Through your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. It has to be here somewhere. No, no. Maybe back here. No, that's not it. I know he's around here. It's just two days until Christmas Eve, and Jesus has to be somewhere. It's been, oh, no, such a tough year. And what the people need on Christmas Eve is Jesus. And wouldn't you know, I can't find Jesus anywhere. Oh, I know. Probably the youth room. There's so much stuff in the youth room. I bet it's, I bet he's in the youth room. I'll go there. No. Oh, this youth room's really being cleaned up. It looks fantastic, but I'm not seeing Jesus in here anywhere. Snacks. Oh, supplies. Would someone have put Jesus in the mini fridge? Nope. Okay. I bet. I bet he's outside. I bet he's outside. Jesus! 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 Don't be a crabby. But no Jesus. Oh. Jesus! Jesus? Jesus! Have you seen Jesus? What I'm going to do for hey, Christmas Eve. Hey, Pastor Joanna, what's going on? Hey, Pastor Maria. Well, I'm having trouble. It's just a few days before Christmas Eve, and I have looked everywhere for Jesus, and I cannot find him. Well, Pastor Joanna, you don't have to search for God. God is already searching for you. Me. Jesus has been with you the whole Well, that's a good thing, because sometimes I file things and I can never find things in my files. So, okay, so I don't actually have to go find Jesus to help everybody else find them on Christmas Eve? No, God already searched for them too. God, the promise of Christmas is that God has come to be with us. We have a name for God, Emmanuel, meaning God with us. That means God has come to search for all of us. God is always with us. That's, thank you, Pastor Maria, for helping me remember this promise. Can you pray with me and, and um, our families and just allow them to remember that right now in our homes and while we can't be connected, that God is still with us? Yes, Thanks. I'd love to. Let's pray. Dear God. Dear God. Thank you for Christmas. Thank you for Christmas. Thank you for being with us. Thank you for being with us. For searching for us. For searching for us. 
So that even though we're apart, so that even though we're apart, we know you are with us. We know you are with us. Thank you for loving us. Thank you for loving us. Amen. Amen. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Good. The first reading for today is recorded in Psalm 96. O sing to the Lord a new song. Sing to the Lord all the earth. Sing to the Lord, bless his name. Tell of his salvation from day to day. Declare his glory among the nations, his marvelous works among all the peoples. For great is the Lord and greatly to be praised. He is to be revered above all gods. For all the gods of all the peoples are idols, but the Lord made the heavens. Honor and majesty are before him. Strength and beauty are in his sanctuary. Ascribe to the Lord, O families of the peoples. Ascribe to the Lord glory and strength. Ascribe to the Lord the glory due his name. Bring an offering and come into his courts. Worship the Lord in holy splendor. Tremble before him, all the earth. Say among the nations, the Lord is king. The world is firmly established. It shall never be moved. He will judge the peoples with equity. Let the heavens be glad and let the earth rejoice. Let the sea roar and all that fills it. Let the field exult and everything in it. Then shall all the trees of the forest sing for joy before the Lord, for he is coming. For he is coming to judge the earth. He will judge the world with righteousness and the peoples with his truth. The gospel for today is recorded in the book of Luke, chapter 2, verses 1 through 20. In those days, a decree went out from Emperor Augustus that all the world should be registered. This was the first registration and was taken while Quirinius was governor of Syria. All went to their own towns to be registered. And Joseph also went from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea, to the city of David called Bethlehem because he was descended from the house and family of David. He went to be registered with Mary, to whom he was engaged and who was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for her to deliver her child, and she gave birth to her firstborn son, wrapped him in bands of cloth, and laid him in a manger, because there was no place for them in the inn. In that region there were shepherds living in the fields, keeping watch over their flock by night. Then an angel of the Lord stood before them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them. And they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid, for see, I am bringing you good news of a great joy for all the people. To you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, who is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign for you. You will find a child wrapped in bands of cloth and lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly hosts praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven, and on earth peace among those whom he favors. When the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let us go now to Bethlehem and see this thing that has taken place, which the Lord has made known to us. 
So they went with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the child lying in the manger. When they saw this, they made known what had been told them about this child, and all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds told them. But Mary treasured all these words and pondered them in her heart. The shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all they had heard and seen, as it had been told them. The Gospel of our Lord. Let us pray. May the words of my mouth and the meditations in our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our God, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. There is a selfie that we took last Christmas Eve of Jonathan, Pastor Maria, Pastor Han, and me right by one of the Christmas tree. It's a close-up of our faces. It was on our Facebook page and our website for a while. We are filled with joy after a long day and evening of worshiping together in the church. And I would guess that if you had stopped us a little bit after we took that selfie and told us that next year we would be celebrating Christmas Eve in our parking lot at Grace, with a high of seven and a low under zero, we would have thought you lost your minds. I probably would have initiated a bet and said, not in a million years is that going to happen. There's no way. And then if you had told me that not only that, but I would be the one promoting for people to come outside on Christmas Eve, then I would have known that something was really, really wrong. Don't you know I don't even like the cold, I would have said. I hate parts of winter. I would never agree to something like that. People even wonder if I'm really from Minnesota. I am, born and raised, and still dislike the cold. But this year has brought about the unexpected. And even though I've grown accustomed to expect the unexpected after nine months of living with a pandemic and all its complexities, I'm still surprised by it. Maybe you are too. I would guess if you had told Mary a year before the birth of Jesus that by next year at this time she would be giving birth to her firstborn son and laying him in a manger, she would have felt similar to me. No way she would have said, I'm not even engaged yet. We're just starting the process of thinking it's time. I can't be having a baby by then. Or if you had told Joseph that he was going to be a dad, and not only a dad, but the human dad for the Son of God, he likewise would have argued with you, and then I think he would have run for the hills. It is amazing what God can do in nine months to change our hearts and minds and spirits. It is amazing how God can take the most unexpected, improbable thing and allow it to become the hope for our world. There is nothing about the story that we hear in the Gospel of Luke that is expected. From the pregnancy of Mary, a young virgin, to angels appearing to shepherds in the fields, our minds stumble to comprehend this birth narrative. I will admit, for years, I would wonder out the outlandishness of the story and try to make sense, thinking about it from a literary standpoint or a historical standpoint. What message is God trying to give us? But even if I could make some sense of it in the reworking of the story, the promise contained in the Christmas gospel is one that is unexpected. The very concept of God daring to enter our human world, not with power and majesty, but instead as a vulnerable baby born to a young, unwed mother, is not what anyone would have ever expected or thought at all. Our expectations are often wrong when it comes to God. 
We expect God to show up in the blessings. We expect God to show up in a beautiful, well-lit church on Christmas Eve where we can be warm and gathered shoulder to shoulder singing Silent Night by Candlelight. After all, God's shown up in that before. We felt it. Our spirits were raised by feelings of community and the wonder of this story and the songs that we sing. Our hearts were warmed as we left the church going back out into that bitter cold and knowing that God is with us even on the coldest of nights. And so that's what we expect on Christmas Eve. We expect that warmth. We expect family. We expect food. We expect presents. We expect the spirit of Christmas, the spirit of God to be upon us. And somehow I think our expectations of Christmas have been created by the Hallmark Channel instead of by the gospel story. The true Christmas story is not one of warmth and comfort and food. It is not one where you get the Nintendo Switch that has been sold out for weeks for Christmas. It is not one where you get the coveted jewelry you've been desiring. It's not even one where the long last family member you've been waiting to show up for so long finally comes home and makes your holiday wish come true. It's none of those things. The birth of Jesus is a messy, hard story of real people dealing with the difficult reality of life. People who have had to travel a long distance because an oppressive government has ordered them around. And it's about people who are anxious and tired and just want a place to rest after a long day of travel. It is about people who are anything but comfortable. People who have had their own hopes and dreams and imaginations changed because what is the reality was not expected at all. Instead, what they are experiencing is life in a weary world. I don't know about you, but I have grown weary this year. Weary of all the decisions that have had to be made in the face of a pandemic. Weary of being stuck at home with my family and not being able to go out with my friends or have life as usual. Weary of not being able to gather at the church for Bible studies in person or for worship on Sunday mornings face to face where we can gather at the Welcome Center and drink coffee and have conversations. After all, those are things that have filled my bucket for so long. Those are ways that I have found God speaking and nourishing my soul, and I long for them this Christmas Eve. I long for you. And I know from your cards and your emails and phone calls that you are weary too. There is longing, a sorrow, and discontentment that we are experiencing we feel as if we have been pushed out into the cold. And for some of us, that will be literal on Christmas Eve. <laughs> and we are longing for God to bring us back into the warmth, back into community, back into God's love. When Jesus is born into our world, Jesus doesn't come to people who are comfortable. He comes to the weary and worn. He comes to the lost and forsaken. He comes to those longing for something more. He comes to those who are lonely and isolated, frustrated and fed up. Those who are longing to be held held by God and loved, held by God in peace, held by God so that we know in the mess of all of this that we are not alone. The other morning, I woke up early, as I have been lately, pre-dawn, before my alarm, and I awaken and lay there. And I had this feeling of sadness and anxiety, and so I started to pray. And my prayer quickly transferred to this, just hold me, God. Just hold me in this moment so I know that I am not alone. 
And I thought of this Christmas story and realized that in the most unexpected way, it is through Jesus that God holds our weary world in love. Not by God wrapping God's arm around us, but instead by inviting us to wrap our arms around God. A baby has to be held. And so when God is born as the infant Jesus, God allows the world to experience God's love in a way we never have before. Not with covenants and commandments, but with the soft smell of an infant, with tiny hands that hold on to your finger and won't let go, with soft, tender skin that hasn't yet been hardened by our world. And so this Christmas, as we are invited to hold the baby Jesus, know that in the most unexpected way that God is holding you in love. God is holding us. God is allowing our weary world to rejoice in this promise, this gift of hope. Tonight, as we gather as God's people, who have heard the message of the angels, inviting us to come and see this most unexpected thing that has taken place. God has entered our world to hold us in love and promise. For tonight a child is born in your homes, in your hearts, and yes, even in a very cold parking lot. A child born for you and for me to hold as God holds our world in love through the birth of our Savior. Amen.
This is the time in our worship together when we would normally collect our offering. Since we are worshiping together virtually, we don't have the opportunity to collect at this time. But we wanted to let you know how grateful we are to you for your generosity throughout this strange, strange year. Thank you so much for all of your gifts and the ways that they continue to help support the ministry of grace here and all over the world. And we'd like to take this time to thank God for answering our prayers. We are truly, truly blessed. If you do have an offering and you would like to give, you can give online through our website. Uh, The new Realm site is up. Or you can send in your check to the church office. Again, thank you so much. Joining our voices with the song of angels, let us pray for the church, the world, and all who are in need. The shepherds sing, Jesus Christ is born. Let your church throughout the world proclaim this good news over the hills and everywhere. Unite the voices of all your faithful people in songs of praise and rejoicing. Lord, in your mercy, hear our our prayer. Heaven and nature sing joy to the world. Give respite to flocks, fields, and those who tend them. Be with all who have to work this Christmas and those who long to work. Come near to us in the beauty of nighttime, the shining of the stars, and the hush of a world at rest. May our wonder at your creation rouse our care for all the earth. Lord, in your mercy, hear hear our our prayer. prayer. The angels sing, peace on earth. Come quickly to still the strife of this world. 
hush the noise of war and violence in places of unrest. Inspire leaders of nations to seek lasting peace and sustainable provision for all in their care. Lord, in your mercy, hear hear our our prayer. prayer. Mary sings melodies of comfort to her newborn child. Bring rest and reassurance to those facing struggles this night. Be with the poor and homeless, those who fear for their lives, and those who have had to leave their homes in search of refuge. Console those who lie awake due to pain or anxiety. Heal those who are sick or hurting. Lord, in your mercy, hear Hear our prayer. prayer. Love sings through the sound of a new baby's cry. Bless new parents and expectant parents. Be with young mothers across the world. Comfort those who long for children, especially those running out of hope or options. Surround families of every shape and size with your love and care. Lord, in your mercy, hear hear our our prayer. prayer. The heavenly chorus sings, glory to God in the highest. We give you thanks for all the saints who have proclaimed your glory in word and deed. Let us join them this night in joyful praise around your eternal throne. Lord, in your mercy, hear hear our our prayer. prayer. God of mercy, come quickly to us with grace upon grace as we lift these and all of our prayers to you this night. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. At this time, we are going to celebrate Holy Communion together. And so I invite you to gather your elements, bread and crackers, juice, or wine. Uh, We'll first hear the words of institution, then we'll pray together, and then together we will receive the elements. Good Christian friends, rejoice with heart and soul and Gathered together by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The body of Christ given for you. The blood of Christ shed for you. Let 
The body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. And now receive this blessing. 
May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious unto you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen.